Hi. This video is part of a series in which I learn about programming a retro video game on the Commodore 64 in assembly. The code I'm using is from the game Supernatural, written by Georg Rottensteiner. You may also know the game as Guns and Ghosts. This is not a tutorial, just me learning game programming. Enjoy the video. Hello, coders! We've gathered together here for step 18, and today is going to be the gamer's nemesis, bats. We're going to be adding and animating bats. Now, let's jump right into uh, what that looks like. I'm going to build and run uh, the game as it is, and there's a couple of things that you can see already. Uh, the player and it hasn't changed at all. I can still just move. Animation works the same. Remember that the player animation uh, is controlled by what we um, do. You know, so the the player control code controls the animation. Um, the bats are a whole different story because they they move themselves. They animate themselves. So we have to do that in a different way now the, the the actual animation that you see basically it's the enemy that we had like the block style enemy but it has wings on it now and you can see one uh, moving up and down and one moving uh, left and right <coughs> um, and there's this one moving very quickly in a circle uh, so yeah let's have a look at uh, and how that's done. Uh, yes, yeah, it's okay. Um, now, first, let's look at the uh, the actual uh, sprites. I've loaded up the sprite project here. You can see our faithful player. Um, and maybe you also remember that, you know, the, the organization of the sprites we had uh the first animation here then we had one enemy and then we had all the all the walking and recoil and falling animations and then after that we have two animations where the wings are up and the wings are just a little above the center and the original is the wings are down so that is the entire there's just three modes of uh, of animation we have to animate the sprite the the bat sprite we have to add it we have to animate it and we have to move it um i've scrolled down to the data again and the first thing that we see is two tables path 8dy and path 8dx um I've worked out why this looks the way it does. Um, it, it, it's as I look at it now, some of it is uh, I'm just I'm just thinking here. Is that hexadecimal? Let's have a let's have a look. I'm just uh, scrolling through the code to see. Yeah, that's hexadecimal. Sorry. <laughs> I was confused for a minute there. So I'm scrolling back to the table. Some of it's hexadecimal and it's over 80 and some of it's decimal and it's under 80 and it's it's really confusing. Um, but I've worked out what it does um, because you want this table. Uh, this is for moving uh, the bat that goes in a circle. Um the, uh, the 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 other bats just go up and down. It's quite simple, but this actually has a path to follow, and this describes the number of uh, pixels the sprite is supposed to move within one frame. And so, just like the jumping and the falling, uh, you see that it sort of has a deceleration. The first frame it's, it's six, second frame six, then five, four, three, two, one. So it sort of slows down, and then zero. And then it speeds up again, but 
any value over 80 means that it's going in a left direction and any value under 80 is means that it's going in a right direction so you may already see uh if you're really um smarter than i am because i i took a while to figure it out that the x movement is going left and then right and then right and then left again it's sort of describing a circle within one frame we do one x movement and one y movement so uh, if we go left uh, left and then right right and left we sort of making that circle the y has the same thing uh, up and down so this goes up up down down up up down down so it makes a makes a circle um, but just look at the way that's that's described uh, from its origin. So we place it somewhere. We make it move in this way. So that's when we want to move a sprite along a path. This has to do with the bat animation. So this table is uh, indexed by uh, something else. Uh, like the uh, we'll we'll see that in a minute. Like the, the the bat animation index, and this says this actually describes the sprite uh, table entry that we need to get for the next animation. Now we don't animate every frame; we skip a few frames, so we have some timers. Uh, this type start multicolor. I'm looking at the other code. That's so the new, no, that's not new, sorry. Yes, it is new. So per enemy type, we uh, uh, we have, I think I, we had this last time. We set whether or not uh, it's a multicolor sprite, yes or no. We actually have the start color here, but we, I think we already had that. Type start sprite, we... Uh, uh, this is another table indexed by by enemy type, and we we describe what kind of shape it has at the start. Um, is a um, a certain type an enemy? Yes or no? The first one is a dummy entry. The player is not an enemy. The rest are all enemies. It's a nice thing though because we can also add sprites that are not enemies. You know, we could have NPCs that uh, that help us. Then um, we have some new behavior: behavior bat left right, left right, and behavior bat up down. This these tables aren't new in themselves, but they contain the low and the high parts of the addresses that need to be called to. Uh, to get this behavior, that that's not new. That's in one of the videos that I've done before. Um, there are some new tables here. Sprite move position. Um, so this is uh, indexed by sprite number. And this is only used um in the in the bat that goes in circles so we have a, um so if we have a an enemy type that moves along a path then we have to describe where in the path it is and this is basically an index uh, into that long table that we saw with all the 80s and the and all those um and this is going to hold for for whichever sprite is currently uh, uh, the bat going crazy. This describes where along the path it is. So it tracks uh, the step number. There's like 32 steps. So one, 0 to 31. Um, and it just counts that off. Then uh, sprite animation delay. That's I don't think that's new. Uh, as I said, per sprite we can keep track of whether or not we want to uh, 
animate it in this frame, yes or no, so we can skip frames because the animation would be too, uh, too fast. If we didn't do that. Now, in the level design, let's have a look here. Yeah, we have a new... Uh, it used to be called enemy. Now we have like a new type, which is a, a bat. We basically installed a bat type. Of course, in the other level, we have three bats, a left-right bat, uh, an eight bat. It's called an eight bat because the goal was to have the bat go in a flat eight like this. Now, you've already seen that if you follow the path, it does this. So either uh, Georg uh, said, okay, you know, I've got a circle going. I, I can make it an eight later on. Or he just didn't figure it out by the time he published this piece of the code. So it's, it doesn't work, uh, but that's why it's called uh, a bat eight. And there's an up-down one. Uh, but just look at the level data. This is, this is just nothing. Um, you could have uh, a large number of levels if you if you look at uh, how little data it takes to describe one level. So I think that's pretty elegant. What I find less elegant, but you know, uh, who am I to complain? Uh, is that the movement of the sprites and the player are it's completely different code. Now. 2095 I'm scrolling up to, uh, maybe I should because that's all the data we've done I'm scrolling up to the top now and I'm scrolling on my second screen here as well so basically what we've done is we've uh, this was sprite enemy remember in in the in the spriters uh, project like we first have the player and then we have the enemy that's now called bat and um, there's a couple of bats down here as well those were the other two so this is enough to describe you to match if, if we add animations to the sprite file we have to match that in this table so that we know where in memory uh, uh, the the sprite shapes are, and we can actually use them because all we need to do is tell the Vic to look at this location, and it'll magically turn that sprite into the shape that we've given it. Of course, we have to initialize it for multicolor and all that, but you know we do that later on. Um, there are some constants here. These are new type bat, left, right is two, and up, down is three, and bat eight is four. So these are the, the types. These, use, these are used as indexes uh, later on. Then we get to the interesting stuff in 1445. I'm, I'm, I'm reading off uh, uh, of Git, uh, which is track that changes for me, and... I'm reading out the uh, the line numbers. This code uh, is the bat behavior left right. Um, of course, it is called for for the correct um, uh, enemy type. Um, if you want to know how that works, then there's uh, a video about that. I don't know which one it is, but you'll have to look at the description. But that's the code where uh, th this. Uh, sorry, this address is kept in a table, the low and the high bit, and we, we sort of call uh, this. So first we have the delay generic counter. Um, uh, we end it with three, which means that um, all the other bits are zero, uh, and we, we sort of force the number. We really use uh, an and mask here. And we, we force the counter to, uh, you know, to, to not grow beyond uh, three. Um, this uh, uh, tells us whether or not we are going to do um, an animation at all. It, it, we, we delay it by three frames uh, by default. So if, if this is... Uh, not equal to zero, then uh, we don't need an animation update. Otherwise, we do. And what we do 
is we go to this, um, well, here's one of the things, it doesn't say what it, what X is supposed to be, but X is the sprite number. So we go to this to this sprite number's animation position. Uh, we uh, we increase it, so we get it. We set it to the next position. Then we load it, check that it's not grown too far, and we put it back in the table. Then we transfer uh, this animation position to Y, and Y is then used as an index into the bat animation table which tells us which animation uh, we are on now and that value is put into the sprite pointer base so this is where we tell the vic to change the sprite shape uh, based on our current animation position if there's no animation update then we can just uh, do the do what we did check the the current sprite direction and either move right or left and toggle the direction if necessary. So that's uh, that's easy. Uh, up down is uh, no different. Uh, again, we check the the generic counter. Do we need to update? Yes or no. If we do need to update, then we do it in exactly the same way as before. And then we go on to actually uh, ch change the location of the sprite. So. These two different uh, areas, this is for animation, this is for location. So there's definitely two different um, items that we're updating um, inside the, the bat control in this, uh, in this case. So uh, this is where we control the position and the shape of the, of the sprite. Now the next one... And you can see that it's called move in flat eight, but it sort of came out a circle. <laughs> uh, but all we need to do really is to change the path. This code is is good enough to handle it. Again, we do the generic uh, a counter. We wait, um, and then we increase the animation position. Again, you know, there's only uh, three different animations. This. This is exactly the same, but now there's the movement stuff. Now, um, we increase the sprite position, we load it, then we check whether or not it's uh, larger than 31. Again, now this is decimal. You know, We have some use of decimal and hexadecimal, but we know that there are 31 different uh, positions for, the, for this sprite. So we check that it's not larger than that. Again, we use the same technique. We use the um, the actual uh, position, uh, uh, and we use that as an index into the path. So we uh, we get the value that's there. If it's zero, then there's no X move needed. There were some zeros in there. Otherwise, we store that value and then we end it with eighty. Now. <coughs> This is where we don't use the sprite's direction, but we check the path value to see whether we're going right or left. If, if you look at what 80 is, hexadecimal, um, then it's the the most significant bit is set and the rest are all zero. So the like bit number seven is one and the rest is all zero. So basically what this does, it's, it's ending the actual value that we get from the table with 80. Um, and with that, you can check whether the value that was in the table was uh, below or above uh, 80. So any value that's above 80 um, uh, will make it move left, and otherwise it'll be moved right. So let's just pretend because the first values that we get uh, is 86 uh, because we've added the value we load it again so you know we save it in parameter one here we load it again and then we end with 7f which means basically we're setting uh, the most significant bit uh, to zero here so that we're left with just six so if we're if we read 86 out of the uh, the table we're left with six. 
And that's what we store in parameter one. And that's the number of steps that we see what we do here. We move the sprite left. We decrease the par parameter one, which is six now. If it's not equal to zero, then move left. So within one frame, we move the thing left six steps. And now, as you can remember, probably it's moving pretty quickly. So I, I, I wonder if, if that is actually a correct value. Uh, but that's what it does. Um, otherwise, uh, if it's if it read a six uh, and we ended it with uh, with eighty, uh, it wouldn't be zero, and we'd be moving right. And then we basically do the same thing. We we move right, but we don't have to end the and the the most significant bit off because it's already six, and we move it right. Uh, when there's no X move needed, then we do exactly the same for Y. I don't have to go through this code because it's, it's exactly the same as the other, but this time we move, uh, we use the Y table. And that's what it does. And that is all that is in this, um, in this piece of code, except for maybe I'm scrolling down to some, uh, initialization code here. It's not too exciting, but you know, it's for completeness sake. Um, when we're starting, see, I'm scrolling up now. Uh, it's scrolling down again. <laughs> Two nine five. This is, you know, we we initialize our our, our values here. It, 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 there's these tables: the sprite direction, animation position, animation delay, sprite position. These all have to be set to zero. If there's anything that's important in programming is to never assume values for your variables. If you use a value, always initialize it and never assume that the system will set it to zero because it won't at some point and you'll be looking for errors until you go crazy. So that was my uh, contribution for our code this month. Um, uh, this month for step 18 i'm not saying that i'm doing one per month but you know although whatever hope you had fun uh like comment and subscribe if you haven't already uh well, at least leave a comment because that's what i like um have a good day i'll see you in the next one bye bye <laughs>